In today's video, we push past the uvula of confoculation surrounding bandwidth. Wide band versus narrow band. We're going to go deep. And we're not going to be using fancy, crazy technical terminology. We're going to be using simple language that any streetwalker in the Philippines can understand with a simple English translation. And we're going to dispel some of the myths surrounding wide band versus narrow band and how one is better than the other. And I'm not going to try to impress you with my boundless knowledge on the subject of bandwidth. Remember, we're going to keep this simple. So first we need to define bandwidth in a broad term. So bandwidth basically is a range of frequencies from high to low. When it comes to transmitting and receiving, the bandwidth generally has to deal with the mode in which you are operating. This would be where you would set your frequency channel to either wideband or narrowband. If you are operating one of the popular handheld radios, whether they be GMRS or in the ham bands, typically you will find these operating in the FM type of modulation. If you are using a CB walkie-talkie, that will be in the AM style of modulation. FM being frequency modulation and AM being amplitude modulation. Both modes have a carrier wave that is centered right smack dab on the frequency. So whatever frequency or channel you put your radio on, that is where the carrier wave is centered and tuned on. With AM or amplitude modulation, the overall strength, which is conferred as the amplitude, is varied to carry your information. And you guessed it, with frequency modulation, the frequency is slightly varied to carry that information. And because both AM and FM are subject to changes in amplitude as your signal propagates, FM ignores the changes in amplitude where AM is part of the modulation. Sometimes you can get static. And that's why FM generally has a higher audio quality than AM. And that also explains why, when I was a kid, all the good music was on the FM stations. All the shit music, sports, and news was on the AM stations. Because nobody cared about the audio quality of shit music, news, or sports. And if you caught the Easter egg in the beginning of the video, you know what to do. And if it's too late, don't worry. Every time we hit a new milestone with the channel, we're going to keep that going. Now that we have a broad definition of bandwidth, and a general understanding of modulation and carrier frequency, we can now discuss between narrow and wide. And it really is just as simple as the difference between the deviation, both in the positive and the negative, from the carrier frequency determines the amount of bandwidth. So wide band will deviate further in the negative, and up to the positive away from the carrier frequency, narrow band will do it less. If we're talking about your little handheld radio with the wide versus narrow band selection, your wide band is going to be 25 kilohertz and your narrow band is going to be 12 and a half kilohertz of bandwidth, which means in wide band you're going to go above and below your carrier frequency 12 and a half hertz. And narrow band, you're going to go 6.25 hertz, both above and below that carrier frequency. So that's why it's important when you're operating in frequency mode and you use the little arrows to step up or down the frequency to make sure that the size of your steps is set properly. And by going into the menu on your radio, you can select how big or small those steps are. So now we know what the difference is between wideband and narrowband. Practically, what does that mean and how does that matter? So this first example, we are going to be talking about simplex. Simplex, that's radio to radio, no repeater involved. If you are on narrowband and the person that you are talking to is on wideband, your audio is going to be diminished. It's going to sound quiet. It's going to sound much softer because the person you are talking to, when they are set in wideband, the filtering that is on the radio, whether it be a super heterodyne or a system on a chip radio, 
it is going to be expecting a certain portion of that bandwidth to be filled. In narrow band, you're only going to be filling half of it, and you are going to sound quiet. And we can put it another way. Say that you and your buddy have ordered a pizza, and you only come back with half of the pizza. There is going to be some quiet awkwardness. Perfect analogy. Conversely, if you are on wide band and your buddy is on narrow band, you are trying to shove 10 pounds of shit into a 5 pound sack. It is going to be clipped and it's not going to sound very good either. It's, it's going to be a mess. For instance, if your buddy asks for a small pizza and you show up with a large pizza and you try to force feed him the large pizza, there will be a mess. Now, if you are operating through a repeater, the repeater settings will dictate whether you should operate in narrow band or wide band. Generally, most repeaters are set up in the wide band configuration. Now, to find repeaters in your area, including all the pertinent information, including wide or narrow band operation, if you're operating in ham, repeaterbook.com is an excellent resource to find repeaters in your area. For my GMRS guys, if you go to mygmrs.com, log in there, they also have a database of repeaters that may be available in your area. And the CB guys, you're not really interested in repeaters anyway. You're going to throw a modified hex beam on the top of your single wide, using that as a ground plane, running a kilowatt through it, free banding like a banshee. And I'm going to briefly touch on uh, SSB real quick. And I know with the GMRS guys, that really doesn't apply to you. But I've got one foot in ham. I've got one foot in GMRS. I've got the tip of something else in the business industrial pool. But this may interest you guys because you may want to broaden your horizons. So real quick, I'm going to make this as general as possible for the layperson. SSB, or single sideband, is basically like AM modulation without the carrier. It's either on one side of where the frequency would be, or the other side. That's the upper or lower sidebands. And all the CB banshees out there, you're already using SSB anyway. So that brings us to the argument that narrow band will travel further than wide band. So, yes, if you go to narrow band, all of your radio transmit output power is concentrated into a smaller range of frequencies. It's the equivalent of getting a little bump up in power. So, with wide band, your radio power is spread out over a larger area. With narrow band, it's more concentrated. So how does that translate into more distance or more fars? Well, honestly, it really doesn't matter an appreciable amount. And the reason being is FM modulation is a, for lack of a better term, it is a lossy form of modulation over distance. And also, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you get a better understanding that just increasing the power is the least effective way to get more distance. And the appreciable power differences between wideband and narrowband aren't really that big anyway. And here's the bad news if you think narrowband is going to give you a little bit more range. Your radio horizon, the wideband, is going to reach out there just as far as the narrowband is before it ends up crashing into the earth at the horizon anyway. For the average individual, wideband versus narrowband has more to do with you talking simplex from radio to radio. Just make sure you're using the same bandwidth. If you're on narrowband, make sure the other guy's on narrowband. And also when it comes down to operating through a repeater, make sure your bandwidth is set for whatever operating mode your repeater set for. And say, there it is. That wasn't complicated. And, you know, it's just like socks. Just make sure they're matching before you go out. That's all that is to it. And just like in previous videos, I want to thank all my current viewers. Welcome all new viewers. If you guys want to subscribe, please do so. I'm not going to beg you. You know how YouTube works. There's affiliate links in the bottom if you want to get some good stuff. It does help the channel a little bit, but it doesn't cost you guys anything extra. And also be on the lookout. The Commodium store is coming soon, which will have some really nice stuff on there for you to take and browse through. So again, thank you very much. I appreciate what you guys are doing for the channel. Really couldn't do it without you. I think we're only at the uh, one month mark. Maybe, maybe we can blow this thing up. Uh, 
I don't know, who knows? Let's try it. I dare you.